Hello, welcome to Online Healing Crusade. We're so glad to have you again uh, on this platform. Hallelujah. If you are joining us for the first time, we uh, want to say that this Online Healing Crusade takes place every day like this. Uh, it's 6 p.m. GMT plus one. Today we're starting uh, a bit um, after 6 p.m. because uh, there's another program. So tomorrow we expect you to be here at 6 o'clock to attend this crusade. This crusade is um, at the instance of God because we, uh, uh, the Lord told his servants to go online with this crusade that he has been uh, you know, conducting around for many years all over the world. And um, God has been healing people, saving people. People have had testimonies, and I believe tonight you are going to have testimonies. All you need to do is believe God is sending His servant to you. Behold, the word of the Lord is coming. Are you ready for it? Be ready. Because when the word of God comes, power comes. Where the word of the king is, there is power. The word of God is the word of the king, the most high God. is coming your way, and power is coming your way. Hallelujah. Join me tonight to welcome the servants of the Lord, Evangelist Louis Ulufemi Bunari. God bless you, and stay connected. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank God for another opportunity to bring you the word of life again today. Thank God for what God has been doing uh, since this program started. It has been a wonderful time. We've had a lot of people giving testimonies to what God has done in their life through this program. And I believe that uh, your life will also experience some stuff of that kind of uh, power and anointing of the Lord again today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. All right, let's open our Bible to Luke chapter 4. The book of Luke, chapter 4. We'll start to read from verse um, 14. Luke, chapter 4, from verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. What kind of fame? The fame of the spread of the anointing, the power of God, the Spirit of God, and the fire of the Holy Ghost walking in his life. It has not been so before. He was born supernaturally, but that did not confer on him power for the miraculous. He stayed among men for 30 years with no evidence of any supernatural manifestation of God in any way, at least recorded in the scriptures for us to know. But at age 30, the Bible said he went out and he went to John the Baptist, who had started ministry maybe like six months ahead of him. And uh, on getting there, he requested for water baptism from John the Baptist. And John the Baptist was actually not intending to do that. He said, wow, you are the one that God said I should uh, go ahead of you and uh, go level the mountain, go fill up the valley, go straighten all the crooked places. I have been the voice of one crying in the wilderness to make a way for the coming of the Lord. And you have come. You are my Lord. I should rather be the one that you should baptize, not that I should baptize you. But Jesus Christ said, you get it done. Let's do it that way to fulfill all righteousness. But what is my point? Until that water baptism and then the heavens opened up and a word came from heaven and said, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Heaven opened, dove came, the dove settled on him permanently, never to rise or never to leave him again. And from that point, he received both water baptism and Holy Ghost baptism together, same day. But with the power, he did not just go about doing good shortly after that. The first thing that the Holy Ghost led him to do was to go and pray and stay in the presence of the Lord and separate himself from all other people. And he did that for a period of 40 days and 40 nights. He ate no food. 
I was drinking water. But he was praying and praying and praying. At the end, the Bible said the devil came three times in the process of that prayer to come and tempt him. But he overcame the devil. Sure, you will overcome the devil in the name of Jesus. Because the master did. But not only that, by the time he was leaving the place, uh, angels came and strengthened him, granting unto him the kind of power and strength and supernatural ability to be able to walk in supernatural power the rest of his life as a minister of the gospel, New Testament minister. So when the Bible says in verse 14 that, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit unto Galilee, he went like 40-something days ago, and then he went to walk for water baptism from John, and then from that time he went to the wilderness to pray for 40 days. So he's just returning back after that now. Now I believe that he left, and he left the house where Mary was, and then the other uh, family members like his brothers, James, John, Jude, whatever, Simeon, and uh, the other females that were there alongside with Mary the mother. He left all of them and went for that water baptism. But he didn't come back to them to come and take permission that I'm going somewhere. The Holy Ghost led them there. So he did not need to take permission from anybody. When the Holy Spirit leads you to do something, you don't need permission from anybody. And you get what I'm saying? That's the, that's the highest authority. That's the highest power. So he obeyed that and uh, he was led by the Spirit from that point. And I believe throughout his journey on earth, he was led by the Spirit. From that day, he submitted leadership to the Holy Spirit. So it was the Spirit that led them into the wilderness. It was the Spirit that led them into all those prayer and fasting. It was the Spirit that led them out. And when he came out, now the people now announced concerning him, and Jesus returned with power, in the power of the Spirit, unto Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region around the world. What was the fame? Miracles, signs, and wonders started happening in the life of Jesus Christ after that Holy Ghost baptism and prayer and fasting. So I challenge you that if you have received Holy Ghost baptism, then go a step further. Start some prayer and fasting from today, April 2021. Start a system. Put yourself through a system of fasting. If you want to carry the power of God, I challenge you. Don't dare try to do the work of God auctionlessly. Don't try to walk the work of God without power. Don't try to do what God said we should do in, uh, say, the work that I do, you shall do take greater things than this shall you do. That is after you are endued with power from on high. When that power is not with you, don't try it. Out there, there is devil. Out there, there are demons. Out there, there are evil spirits. Out there, there are different things that will disturb a man from manifesting the purpose of God to his generation. Are you getting what I'm saying? But you, if you are ever going to operate in the supernatural, ensure that you are loaded with power. Luke chapter 24, same Luke where he received power, he returned with power in chapter 4, verse 14. We go to chapter 24, verse 47. I mean, verse 40. Well, okay, let's look at 47. Uh, from 46, and he said unto them, Thus, thus it is written. And thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And we are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but, but, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. You get that? <laughs> the 
don't say you want to go and fulfill the ministry or commission of God or whatever if you do not have the power that is usually given to people whom God has called to go and do that. If you don't have that, don't try to go out. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because he told them here, he said, tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high, until you are clothed with power from on high, until you are enveloped with power from on high, until you are submerged and immersed inside the power of God that comes from on high. Are you getting what I'm saying? Ah, yeah, yeah. So, every one of us that is going to walk the works of God, you must seek the power of God. You can't do the work of God with your brain. You can't do the work of God with your certificate. You can't do the work of God with your color. You can't do the work of God with your uh, ability. You can't do the work of God with the fact that you are, you are from the white race, you are not from a black race or whatever. Yes, whether you belong to people of high class or nobility or you are from royal family or something, those things does not confer the power to do signs and wonders and miracles and healing the people that are sick. Those things don't confer so power upon anybody. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you must understand that Jesus Christ gave this instruction here and I think everybody should observe the same instruction. You don't go out until you are endued with power from on high. So whatever is going to take you as a minister of the gospel, I encourage you, find a place where you can pray and fast. If you cannot fast for three days consecutively without food, you can fast for one day consecutively without food. Morning, afternoon, evening, no food. You eat the next day. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's fasting a day and a night but if you cannot do that for so long you can be fasting from morning till evening that means you are fasting the day you are not fasting the night so all through the day you will not eat anything around six o'clock in the evening you can eat are you getting anything but ensure that you do not do that one for three days and say you are stopping you can't do that one for seven you can do it for 14 you can do it for 21 you can do it for 30 you can do it for 40. that is not eating in the morning not eating in the afternoon or eating only in the evenings so you will not be eating as much as you were eating formally you have cut off two out of your three meals that you take for a day I get what I'm saying, but now do it for a long time. The longer you do that one, the more it will be equivalent with somebody who is not uh, eating at all for many days. But you are eating every day, but you are not eating morning and afternoon every day. You are eating only in the evening every day. You can do that for a long period. I get what I'm saying, and then uh, it will help you to be able to put the body on that and then to elevate your spirit. So that what Jesus Christ did in his soul was that he didn't eat any food for 40 days, just like Moses did. Nothing for 40 days, nothing, nothing, except water. No food, no small food, no big food, no light meal. Now you get what I'm saying? And he did that. But you see, it's not also about fasting, because John fasted more than that because John did not just do 40 days fasting like Jesus John did all his days fasting what do I mean by all his days well if somebody is eating low cost and why don't you how many pieces of low cost can you eat and then you will be filled up so it's just to, just to keep body and soul together I was not really eating anything serious all his life he didn't ride vehicle all his life. He didn't live in a good house all his life. Those are part of fasting. He didn't wear any good clothes all his life. Continuous fasting. For all the 30 something years that he lived on earth, it was all fasting. But the Bible says he is the voice of one crying in the wilderness to prepare the way of the Lord. So he was doing all that to prepare the way of the Lord. And since you don't have a John who is going to start ministry ahead of you to help you prepare the way, so you have to do the preparing of the way by yourself. So you have to do the fasting for yourself, for your ministry to make it in life. You have to do the fasting. 
John did it for Jesus. Still, Jesus still did uh, 40 days. I you get what I'm saying? And, and there was a time that the Lord was speaking to me and I said, well, I only did some fastings when I started ministry. I see that you did only once. He said, oh man, don't you read that other people in the Bible did more than once? And did you not read in the Bible that if they said they should write everything that I have done, the earth will not be able to contain it. So there are others that I did that you are not aware of. For you to be able to carry your anointing, not carry it for just one crusade, carry it for all crusade. You have to be consistent, consistently consistent with prayer, consistently consistent with the word, consistently consistent with fasting, consistently consistent with purity. You can't subtract any of those things for you to carry the power of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Say. Because he got to a place and he said, This kind of demon will never go away except by prayer and fasting and also by faith. He said, You couldn't do that because of your unbelief, lack of faith. Okay? So all these things are telling us what we need to know about the power of God and how to contain the power of God and keep carrying that power for a long time. So that you will not be an ex anointed. People will not call you and say, God used to use that man before, but it's no more using him now. People can say that if they find out that nothing is happening in your life anymore. And you get what I'm saying? You see, some people, all they have is structure. They have a very good structure. They have everything going on in place, that everything is well organized, well arranged. <laughs> it's good to have that, my brother. But ministry must be more than structure. Ministry is grace. And grace is made available when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. He will exalt you at the great time. There are things that God intends to do for us. Uh, but we have to do our part for him to be, to, to be able to do his own part. Okay? Uh, when he said, go and borrow vessels, not a few. The woman did not even borrow anyone. He just used the one that was in, a, in, in his house. And that limited how much of oil he's going to get. It was when there was no more vessel that the oil finished. The oil doesn't finish. It stopped. It stopped flowing. So you don't let the anointing stop, don't let the grace stop, don't let the fire in your spirit stop because you stop doing the things that you're supposed to do to keep the anointing moving in your life. Don't let it stop. Keep bringing in vessels, keep bringing in vessels. And those When I went to India many years back, 2014 or so, 15, for a crusade, a very powerful crusade, I think 14, uh, it was wonderful. Was wonderful. I think God pushed me out at that time. I was not planning for any big crusade at that time because the, the assignment I have back home in Nigeria was to go to higher institutions and be doing crusade there among university students, polytechnic, college of education, wherever you have uh, people that are of post secondary degree, they are in their um, modern secondary school. I was ministering to them all over the country, north, south, east, west of Nigeria. Uh, my country. That was what I was doing when the opportunity to go to uh, uh, India came. I went there and I didn't um, uh, expect anything too fantastic or whatever, but God opened the door. And we went out and did a very massive crusade. Thousands of people came, not just few, few thousand, thousands of people came. And uh, God saved many every night and healed some and deliver some from demons and then ministry of Holy Ghost baptism to many so all these things happened at that time and uh, from that time to this time the anointing has not stopped flowing anytime we go for any crusade but you have to maintain whatever you used to do to keep the anointing flowing so because people will not want to come and they come with sicknesses and disease and their disease still remain in their body. They want to come and they want to have the experience of I came, but God healed me. I was formerly like this, but this now has happened in my life now. I'm better off because of the presence of God and His anointing at the meeting. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that's why I'm saying what Jesus Christ said that He returned with power. I pray you will return back to your church with power. You will return back to your fellowship with power. You will return back to your house with power. You will return back to your office with power. People that are diabolical will not be chasing you around with their evil spirit power. When you have Holy Ghost power, you should be 
return back to your office with power. You should return back to your home with power. You should return back to wherever you are coming from with power. After resurrection, after Easter resurrection, there should be power following you. It was resurrection power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And the power that raised him up from the dead, the same power is working in us. Edozia Agadushalu Kiribokotosa. The Bible says, if the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwell in you, shall quicken your mortal body. You shall give life to your mortal body. Let's continue as you get to verse um, 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. What was written there? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the ministers, and sat down, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fasting on him. And he began, he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words that were proceeding out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? He has just announced to them his ministry. He has just announced to them the power and the anointing with which he's going to be doing ministry for the next 30 years or so, or 33 and a half years. Are you getting what I'm saying? Or for the next three years. He, 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 he lived 33 and a half years, but he did ministry for three and a half years. Are you getting what I'm saying? So he just announced to them the source of his power and his anointing now. That as he's returning from where he has gone to pray and to fast, he's coming back with power. He has come with that power. And he started manifesting that power they have that way. So one of the things the anointing does for us is to be able to validate our claims on the word of God. The anointing is able to duplicate the miracles that are written in the Bible happening in the life of people today. So the anointing is what validates our claims. The anointing is what uh, uh, authenticates our claims. The anointing is what empowers and make sure what we say come to pass. The anointing is what empowers what we say so that we don't be ordinary. The anointing is what makes the word of God activated in our day. Say today, this thing we are reading shall happen. What shall happen? There will be preaching of the gospel under anointing. There will be healing of people under anointing. There will be deliverance to the oppressed under anointing. There will be eyesight to the blind under anointing. There will be release of those that are in captivity under anointing. And then there will be acceptable year of the Lord. Jubilee everywhere. Rejoicing. Praises. Joy. Because God is as come. And people who have problems, broken heartedness have been healed. People have been battered, scattered by the devil, have been brought back and been restored. Homes that have been destroyed have been met together. Different things begin to happen when the anointing comes into town. The Bible says that uh, when the anointing that was operating in the life of uh, Philip the Evangelist enters the city of Samaria, the Bible says there was joy in all the city. You understand? Joy. When you see one house, one household, a lame has walked there. Another house, a blind has been able to see there. Another house, a pregnant woman has received the, I mean, a woman that is looking for pregnancy for many years is now pregnant. You know, joy will be all over everywhere. Somebody whose child has been under demonic assault for many years and is already running mad is now free. There's no madness anywhere. The mind is restored back. Don't you see that if that happened in almost every household, the whole place will be full of joy, full of joy, full of excitement. That's what happened because the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So where the kingdom of God is, is righteousness will be there, peace will be there, joy will be there. Are you getting what I'm saying? So 
righteousness means people will no more do wayward, immoral things and all that. Toggery will stop, immorality will stop, uh, iniquities will stop, you know? All those things that destroy brain of people, destroy life of people, drugs will stop, you know? So righteousness, where righteousness is, there will be peace. Where there is unrighteousness and there is all sorts of immoral things and uh, degrading things and corrupting things happening, you will see that there will be confusion everywhere. There will be fights here. Somebody will slap his wife. Somebody will hurt his colleague. Different things will just be happening. It's because the devil is already manifesting there. But where God is, there will be righteousness, there will be peace, and there will be joy. God cannot be in a place and everybody there is sad. They are not looking all right. They are just sad and morose. Their face is not looking fine at all. It means the devil is there. But where God is, you see joy over everybody. Nobody is having one stress and all that. Looking haggard. No. Everybody just okay. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is the work of the anointing. I make God to tell you that that anointing is in operation here with us today. And as I pray with you, whatever the devil has brought into your life that is not of God is going to vamoose, going to disappear from your body today. By reason of the anointing, that's why the anointing, the anointing is to destroy the yoke. Say the spirit of the Lord is upon me. So I declare the same to you. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me. He did not just call me and send me, go and preach the gospel for me without anointing. He gave me enough anointing to, to do my job. I get what I'm saying. So when I pray in the name of Jesus, things happen that will not have happened naturally. What is a miracle? A miracle is what is not supposed to happen that happened. What is beyond normal ability of man? I know this one couldn't have been a man doing this. God has done it. That's a miracle. So whatever report, negative report you have been given from anywhere, on this altar it can be reversed. Once it is negative, it means it is reversible. Once it is negative, it means it's not final. With God, it's not final. That negative report is not the final report. That's the better report that comes from God. All right, shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, everyone and anyone here in the sound of my voice today, and they have any sickness or disease in their body, I will pick you the spirit of infirmity. Loose your grip upon them in the name of Jesus. You spirit of sickness, disease, I command you. Loose your grip in the name of Jesus. And I ask those demons to get out of your body. Get out of your system. Get out of your network. Get out from around your life and whatever belongs to you. In the name of Jesus. Even if it is around your vehicle, or around your office, or around your business, anywhere, or around your home, that the demon is already operating. Oh, today I cast those demons out of your life. In the name of Jesus. And I say the peace of God begin to settle upon your life, upon your home, upon your family, upon your job, upon your church. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. May your body organs be restored to perfect healing. In the name of Jesus. So that you can have righteousness, you can have peace, you can have joy. In the name of Jesus. Well, that's for today. Today is Sunday. That's why we always talk around ministers and ministry. More than just praying for the sick on Sunday. Uh, but Monday to Saturday, every day, we preach 6 p.m. GMT plus 1. Uh, and then uh, we minister to the sick particularly. Anybody that's having any sickness or disease in their body, you bring them tomorrow when you're coming. And then uh, tell them to log on to the same channel. I believe that uh, God is ready to reach as many people as possible. But you can be our help to make them to come. Since you are getting blessed from what you are hearing, you can also link some of the streets. Thank you. God bless you. Until tomorrow, be healthy, wealthy, and strong. Your peace.